All right, guys, UFC 306 is going down this weekend, and the Sugar Show defends its championship against Marab Dwalashvili in what is going to be one of the best fight cards the UFC has ever put on. And once again, you boys partnered up with the DraftKings Sportsbook to give all new customers a fantastic offer. But look, I'm raising the stakes. The UFC paid a lot for UFC 306, so DraftKings giving more for UFC 306. All you got to do, bet $5 or more and get 250 in bonus bets instantly when you use my promo code Cormier. Guys, O'Malley and Dewalis really don't like each other. We got a trilogy between Shevchenko versus Grosso. It's Mexican Independence Day, one of the best fight cards and the best environments the UFC does all year, and I am cannot wait to be in the building for it. Bet only $5 or more when you sign up using my promo code Cormier, and you'll get $250 in bonus bets instantly. At the DraftKings Sportsbook, guys, the crown is yours, but the Bantamweight Championship will be on the line from the Sphere in Las Vegas. Let's go. Look at this guy. Look, at, you, you see how they respond to you? Like other fighters, they're almost like fans a little bit. Oh, oh dude, it's, yeah, 100%. Isn't it kind of crazy? It is. Feels right, though. Yeah, it's doing, your show. I'm doing sweet shit. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's deserved. Yeah, my man. Thank you for checking in with me. Good to be back. As always, guys, the Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley, back in the octagon this weekend. Thanks on Marab Duelis Vili, live from the Sphere. Champ, your life has just kind of really changed. I've watched you at the Cardinals, University of Montana, but still taking it all in, like just loving and loving life. You said something in the fighter meeting, I get to do this. This is not a job. How do you maintain that mentality? It's perspective. I understand that, you know, I'm, I'm only going to, I'm, I'm 29, and I still have a few good years left, but from when I got in the UFC at 22, to 29. Like it's, it's been, been seven it's years. It's been seven already. years. So, I mean, that went like this. So, I'm like, the next seven years got to go like that. And each year is going by a little bit faster. So, I just have to, you know, keep reminding myself I get to do this. And, uh, you know, it feels good to be healthy going into a fight. Uh, very excited and to, to perform. I'm, I'm a performer. And I, once I'm out of the UFC, it's like I'm not, I can't rap, I can't dance, <laughs> I can't perform anymore. So, yeah. this is, I got I to gotta take it all in. Hey, man, why you did Henry Cejudo like that? On that, that podcast. You go on the man podcast and you get... Why you do him like that, man? He sat there. He tried to... He told Kamaru. He said, no, he did it to both of us. Not just you. I said, nah, Henry. He did that to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I messaged Kamaru after and said, hey, bro, I just can't fucking stand Henry. <laughs> I have nothing but respect. I gave, I gave Kamaru his you respect did. as he deserves. Henry, he's, he's going to be at home streaming this fight illegally because he can't afford it on his couch, kicking his feet up like this. <laughs> Henry is just a little fucking weasel and... Uh, I don't like that guy. What makes you not like him so much? I don't know if it's his face or <laughs> just his... You know what it is? It's his attitude. And it's, yeah. he, he rubs a lot of people wrong. He's got this big ego and he's like, oh, I'm the man of fighting and I'm pound for pound and teaching John Jones how to fight. It's like, bro, you're not that fucking good. Yeah, you won a couple <laughs> fights, but you're not that fucking good. He's talking about going down to 25 because I'm running the division. But he's like, oh, I want to fight Sean. You don't want to fight me. He yeah. doesn't want to fight me. I'm a nightmare for him. He's like, oh, I'll take you down and hold you down. Cool. I'll get up and kill you. Like, you suck. I don't you guys, Henry sucks. He, he does that, and you guys, he does it by annoying you guys. So it's almost like you guys keep him a little relevant because at the end of the day, he's lost two fights in a row, right? He shouldn't be on, uh, at least mentioned by the champion. Uh, well, I could mention it just because it's stabs. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> people are roasting him in the comments. I go and look at the comments just to get some laughs, and it's... It's good. They is deserved. It maybe maybe bring him down a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, humble him a little bit. But you like on your stuff right now. Like I just watched your your pre fight presser and you immediately said Marab sucks. Clip just this because you're he, you you feel like it would just rub him yeah. the wrong way. Marab's very emotional and he's getting fired up. And I seen him walk off an interview when someone asked him if Umar would be next. And Marab has this thing against Umar. I think it's because Marab. Rob fought so many fights to get to the title where Umar's only won a few and yeah. he's getting talked about for fighting for the title and rubbing Rob the wrong way. So, you know, I know that Rob will see it. You know, me saying Umar's more deserving than Rob <laughs> and it's going to fucking drive him crazy. And Rob, we're just pecking at him, pecking at him, pecking at him. He's all over the place. He's grabbing fans' hair. He's, Dude. he's just, he's, he's a head case right now. 
And uh, it's, that's exactly where I want him going to this fight. You know, when you, when you have done the things that you've done now in your career, from the fight with Cheeto, getting to correct what happened mm -hmm. in fight one, winning the belt from Al Jermaine Sterling, that fight with Piotr Jan, which was extremely competitive, many didn't believe you were ready for that at the time. You went out there and you've done all these things. You start to get used to living in these moments. You watch Marab right now, and they're grabbing the fans' hair. The being at the bar dancing, saying he's drinking. Yeah. Do you think that this moment might be a little too big for him? I think the well, the fact that he went down to Mexico makes me. I mean, he didn't go to Mexico to go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. He went to Mexico for a re specific reason. If I had to guess, you know, yes. they have the stem cells down there. It's, yeah, they you know, do. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why do you go to Tijuana, Mexico? I heard he was out at Hong Kong, whatever that place is. <laughs> um, so I think he's, he, he, I don't know. I don't know, but grabbing the fans' hair because that kid said sugar's your daddy or something like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just very unprofessional. It's like I can't imagine someone yelling at me, Rob's better than you, and me getting, actually getting mad at that person. Mm -hmm. Like, it just shows maybe some insecurities he has or, or something. You know, when you, and I remember being in a situation with John Jones, right? When you're in there with a big star and you're the, the, the B-side, because that's, that's really what it is, you tend to kind of act up. But then at times when you do that, you become emotional. Mm -hmm. It looks like, or from what you're saying is, he seems emotional. You think that'll lead to mistakes and is kind of getting to him a little bit part of the plan because we've seen prior when people are emotional, they do mistakes and it gets a guy like you. It really does take one opportunity to shut the lights off. 100%. I mean, he could come in there as calm as a cucumber and he's going to get knocked out. It's just, you know, if I can get him a little bit more emotional, you know, it might benefit me a little bit, but he's getting knocked out regardless whether he's emotional or not. The emotional stabs is just for us to giggle at. Yeah. You know, this guy is a tremendous wrestler. Mm -hmm. He fights with an insane pace. Can do, I mean, he took 50 shots in 25 minutes against Peorian. When you watch him and you're studying Marab Dualashvili, what do you make of him as an opponent and how do you build your plan to fight a guy like that? A lot of footwork. Footwork. That's what wins me all these fights. Like, it it comes on the footwork. If I'm orthodox and I'm southpaw, then I'm mm -hmm. you know I, I'm hitting him from different angles. Peter, he took 50 shots on Peter Young because Peter Young stood there flat-footed, two feet from him. Mm -hmm. Peter John's not a tall guy. He, he's got to be close to hit him. I can hit hit Marab at a lot further distance. So I'm not gonna be standing in front of him. I'm gonna be moving a lot this fight. You know they were talking about your fighting style. I don't know who we were talking about, and I was like. It's little details, because you're constantly fainting at dudes. You switch feet, you faint. They get you orthodox, you faint. Southpaw, you faint. And it seems to freeze them. Yeah. And then eventually, they get so frustrated that they go. Yeah. And then that leaves you opportunities. How do you keep him at that range, though? How do you, how do you keep him at that range? Hurt him. Hurt, Hurt him and uh, make him question stuff. I think he's going to... I don't think he's go ready for... He's never been in there with someone like me, um... The range is going to be way different. I feel like it's going to be a, a, a rude awakening. He's going to get in there. The first couple minutes, we're going to see a lot. We're going to see a lot. And uh, I don't think he is – I mean, whatever Aljo can tell him from our fight, like there's mm -hmm. not a lot of – Aljo did right to say, hey, this worked. Um, so I, I'm curious if he's going to come out calm and get knocked out or come out you know, rushing and get knocked out. Either way, he's getting knocked out. The front kick, the front kick that you throw – you use it almost like a range finder as you jab a little bit. Can you do that against a guy that's trying to grab your leg all the time? Or do you kind of have to stay a little bit back from poking at him with the front leg? Well, I think, you know, a tee, it's hard to the catch tee. a teep. It's yeah. hard to... Marab shoots a lot of single legs. I'm very comfortable in single leg defense. Um, so I, I'm not too worried about that. We've heard for years that you've got great grappling, right? We've heard for years that we... Do we see it this weekend? Do we see you yeah. have to defend yourself... On your back, because for years, remember you were doing the jujitsu competitions. Yep, yep. It's kind of crazy when we think about this, right? Because Rogan comes back with all these stories. Oh, Sean was doing this, and Sean's training with this guy, and then you almost become like, uh, it's like you start your reputation starts to precede you in most instances. And he was telling us about this grappling and these tournaments and all that, but we've never had to see it. Do we get to see, or do we have to see you defending off of your back this weekend? Ideally, we don't. Like, for me, if I'm on my back, I'm not necessarily losing. I could hurt Marab 
bad and, uh, you know, end up on my back and still win the round. Um, yeah. I, I just have to be very smart with my energy this fight. It's 25 mm -hmm. minutes. It's, it's going to be a very high-paced fight. I'm going to have to be smart with my energy. Um, but ideally, I don't, I don't, he doesn't take me down. If he does take me down, I'm not, it's not over. Like, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, either he keeps it standing and he wins or Marab takes it down and, and Marab wins. That's not how this gets. That's not the two variations of how this plays out. He could take me down multiple times and I could still win this fight. Yeah. Either decision or I, I truly believe I could knock him out in the fourth and fifth round. Henry Judo said that you're struggling in training. Did you see that? I did. He said you're struggling in training. Multiple training partners have told him that you're getting taken down and you can't work your way back to your feet. Where does he get this information? Um, you have know. a small team. It's like you're one of the guys that built your own team. Yeah, no, Who's we definitely this? used guys from over there, and I sparred with them, and they were you know, really, really good guys, and uh, I really appreciate everybody I spar with. And uh, so the guys that I sparred with that went over there and either told them that stuff or Henry's making stuff up because I absolutely just roasted him <laughs> and he is just feeling it. He's feeling it. He doesn't like it. So he's going to start chirping at me. Um, but I know he also said I had an injury. Yeah. Um, so and I'm you like, say you're healthy. I'm healthy. I feel really, really good going into this fight. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he's just throwing stuff out there, trying to just burn me down because he's feeling real, really insecure right now. You know, you're fighting this guy, Marab. You're fighting Marab this weekend. Everybody else is, you say you're going to knock him out. This is a once-in-a-lifetime car. What does it mean to you? Sean O'Malley, right, a kid from Montana, to be one of the biggest stars in the UFC, headlining a once-in-a-lifetime card uh, with an opportunity to defend the championship for the second time against a guy that's as dangerous as Marab. It's, just, it's almost like a perfect storyline. Like, it, it, they have the, the bantamweight champ versus the number one contender, uh, 10 fight win streak versus a 19 fight win streak. It's as good as it gets at the sphere, 101 event, Mexican Independence Day, which is uh, people, are, you know, a little bit hating. They're like, me and Marab aren't Mexican. I have a Mexican <laughs> family. I'm, I'm yeah. not as Mexican as it gets, but I'm, I'm Mexican. Yeah. So it's, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored because I know Elian Max wanted that fight. I know Connor supposedly wanted that fight. Mm -hmm. So for them to pick me, um, I think they know what I'm capable of, and I'm going to go out there and deliver not only for the fans, but for the UFC. I think that your division is the best in the UFC right now. Yeah. Before I let you go, I have to ask you, what do you make of the division, right? Says Umar's next. At least that's yeah. what you hear. But Umar said he's ashamed that you're the champion mm -hmm. right now. Like, what do you make of your division as a whole in terms of the people that are waiting for you who has done things that doesn't really happen at Bantamweight? People don't become stars in the small weight classes. Yeah, I mean, if Umar's ashamed, maybe he can sit down and wait. And if he's not going to respect the champ, I might pick Figgy next. <laughs> Mark can wait. He'll probably pull out of waiting. Um, you know, Peter Yan versus Figgy could be a possible next one. Elia, I've been talking about the Elia fight for a while. Umnar and his unibrow could get it too. But we'll see. It just depends on, you know, how, how this fight plays out, how some other fights play out. Marab's next. Obviously, i got to go out there and do what I do against him. Um, we'll see. Your man. Guys, Sugar Sean O'Malley takes on Rob Duales Vili. UFC 306 from the Fear this weekend. Hit that pay per view buy button. Tap in everything Sean's doing. Also, hey man, your YouTube channel's good. Podcast is awesome. You guys are doing great work. Thank you again for checking in with me, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yep. Guys, like, subscribe. Go tap into all this stuff. Until next time, peace.